Hello and welcome to the fifth tutorial on using SPSS. In this video we'll be looking at the data set we're going to be using in the rest of these videos and conducting some univariate analysis on two different variables. You should already know how to start SPSS, open files and should also be familiar with the SPSS interface. For this tutorial you need to open the ONS opinion survey data that is available on Blackboard. This data set is an Office for National Statistics survey from 2011 that focuses on people's well-being and has 1,124 cases. If you click on variable view, you'll see that there are 23 different variables. Variable 1 is an individual identifier and variables 2 to 10 relate to the respondent's background characteristics, their sex, age, education, class, ethnicity and so on. Variables 11 to 23 are about various aspects of respondents well-being and health. Click back to the data view. In this video we're going to look at exploring the data one variable at a time. We'll look at a categorical variable first, sex, before going on to look at a continuous variable later. The first thing to do is go to the Analyze menu, select Descriptive Statistics, and then Frequencies. A dialog box will appear with two columns. The column on the left hand side has a list of all the variables in the data set. The column on the right is blank at the moment. Find the variable called Sex in the left hand column. Press the arrow button between the columns and that variable will be transferred to the second column. SPSS will conduct analysis on any variables that you transfer from the left hand to the right hand column. Notice that at the moment display frequency tables is selected in the bottom left hand corner of the dialog box. For categorical variables this is a very useful option but it's often less useful when you're dealing with continuous data. This is something that we'll come back to later in the tutorial. Now you can press the OK button. After you've done this, a new window will appear called the Output window. This is where the, all the results from SPSS analyses are displayed. Here you can see that in the first table that we have 1,124 cases and that none of them have missing data on the variable sex. In the second table, we can compare both the numbers and proportions of male and female respondents. As you can see, we have a slight imbalance in favour of females, but this won't be a problem for our analysis, as most analyses take into consideration the relative size of different groups. There could be a problem, however, if you have a very small number of respondents, say fewer than 10, in any one group, but this isn't the case here you'll see that the tables generated by SPSS aren't very elegant. I don't recommend using SPSS outputs in research reports and you won't be allowed to do that in your assignment. Other programs such as Word and Excel can generate much clearer tables, charts and graphs. This doesn't mean however that you shouldn't produce tables and graphs in SPSS. These can be very helpful to you during your analysis as they help you visualize the distribution of your data. You'll notice that the output window has the same menu as the data editor. This means that you don't have to go back to the data editor to conduct another analysis. So select Analyze, Descriptive Statistics and Frequencies and you'll get the same dialog box as you had before. You'll notice that Sex is still selected in the variable column. SPSS always remembers your last analysis in case you want to repeat it. This can be useful, but if you want to do a different analysis, you need to press the reset button. This time, we'll select marital status and press the arrow. But we'll also click on the charts button. Select bar charts, press continue, and then press OK. This time, we'll get some new output in the output window. You can see that there's three categories, married or cohabiting, single, and widowed, divorced, or separated. We can see the frequencies and percentages here, but also for our information, 
there is a bar chart which might help us get a better idea of the proportions between the three groups. So far, we've been looking at two categorical variables, and so I've just looked at percentages and frequencies. But now we'll look at some continuous variables. So we need to go back to the data editor. If we click on the variable view, we can see that variables 11 to 22 relate to the answers given by respondents about life satisfaction and well-being. Respondents were asked to rate their satisfaction with various aspects of their life on a scale from 0 to 10. In the lectures and seminars, we'll look at reasons why this type of data may not actually be continuous. But as we're just trying to learn how to use SPSS in this video, we'll ignore these issues for the moment and just assume these data are really continuous. In your assignment, however, you'll need to be very careful when deciding what level of measurement best describes each variable, as you'll be assessed on the judgments you make and the corresponding analyses you use. We'll look now at the variable satisfaction in more detail. We can find what the responses to this question look like, or what's called its distribution, by using measures of central tendency, averages, and measures of dispersion. To find out more about this variable, click on the Analyze menu and move your cursor down to Descriptive Statistics. Instead of selecting frequencies, like we did last time, we'll select Descriptives, and we get a very similar type of dialog box. Again, it's got two columns. The one on the left has all your variables, and on the right, there's a blank column waiting for the variables you select. Now, these dialog boxes can be expanded so that you can read the variable descriptions a little bit more easily. You'll notice that the variable names are actually only included at the end after the variable labels. This is one reason why it's a good idea to keep your variable labels relatively short. So, select the satisfaction variable and press the arrow to move it into the right-hand column. As usual, SPSS has some default settings, so we need to press the Options button and find out what options are available to us. As you can see, already selected are the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum, and the maximum values, all measures you should be familiar with. We could also select the range, but as the values on the satisfaction scale only go from 0 to 10, and as we'll know the minimum and maximum values that the respondents selected, this won't provide us with much additional useful information, so I'll deselect the range. You need to then press the Continue button, and then the OK button on the other dialog box. The results of the analyses we've just conducted appear again in SPSS's output window. SPSS has generated a table that contains all the information we asked for. The first thing to note is that only 1,115 cases included information on this variable. If you remember, there were 1,124 cases in total in the data set, so nine respondents didn't answer this question for some reason. That's less than 1% item non-response, but remember this would be in addition to any initial non-response caused by people not wanting or not being able to participate in the study at all. You can see that the minimum value provided by respondents is 0, and the maximum value is 10, so the whole range of available responses has been used by respondents. The mean average is 7.38, which suggests that most people are quite satisfied overall, and the standard deviation is quite small, just less than 2, meaning that most respondents aren't too far away from the mean, and satisfaction is generally quite high among our respondents. You'll notice that we didn't get the option to generate the mode or median averages, or view our data graphically. We'll do that now in order to get a more comprehensive overview of the data. And we can use the menus at the top of the output window as they're the same as the ones in the data viewer. Select the Analyze menu and scroll down again to Descriptive Statistics. But this time, select Frequencies, just as we did when we were looking at the variable sex and also at marital status. 
you'll see that marital status is still there from last time. So we will reset. And we'll expand the dialog box so you can see the variables properly. Now we want to select satisfaction and move it over to the right column. And then select statistics. And you can see that we have various options. But let's just select the ones that we didn't have last time, median and mode, and press continue. And let's also select the chart options, choose histograms, and also show normal curve on histogram. We then press continue. Earlier, I talked about the display frequency tables option. With continuous variables, you often get a lot of different individual values. So as a general rule, it's best to deselect that option when you're looking at continuous data. Finally, we can now press OK. In the output window, you can see that the median and mode values are both 8, providing more evidence to suggest that most respondents are generally satisfied with their lives. If you look at the histogram, you can see that this variable is negatively skewed, meaning that most of the respondents selected values at the higher end of the satisfaction scale. You'll also notice that the number of respondents, standard deviation and mean, are provided at the top right corner of the histogram. And if we go up, you can see that those nine missing cases are also identified in the table. As you've seen, you can find out a lot about a variable quite quickly by using some relatively simple statistical procedures without using any maths or doing any complicated calculations. It's very important, however, that you understand all the techniques you are using and how to interpret them before you actually conduct any analyses. Now that we've seen how to conduct univariate analysis, we'll move on to bivariate analysis, looking at the relationship between variables. That will be covered in the next videos.